Jose for inviting me to talk about what is hijab, um, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Young Ummah. The Young Ummah is a nonprofit organization that me and a group of friends started about a year ago, and the focus of the organization is to give a platform to the youth, especially to Muslim youth, during like this hiding time of Islamophobia. So to give them a platform to talk about important issues, which they can. Uh, do by publishing articles on our website or by going to different college campuses and talking on different issues the way I am talking to you guys today on the topic of hijab. So before I start off, I want to ask you guys in general, what is hijab? Because you obviously have seen all of us or a bunch of us wearing hijab and I bet you've um, heard about hijab through the media or TV. So I just want to open it up to you guys just quickly someone wants to volunteer, what do you think hijab is? Yes? Like a symbol of religious devotion. Okay, that's a really good response. Anybody else? Um, it's meant to protect women's modesty. Yes, okay. So you guys gave really good responses. It is a symbol of religious devotion and it is a symbol of modesty. However, sometimes people don't remember that hijab is not just linked to Islam. Hijab is something that existed far before Islam even came. Um, for example, I have this quote from Italian minister Roberto Moroni, and he said, if the Virgin Mary appears wearing a veil on all of her pictures, how can you ask me to sign on a hijab ban law? So the point is, is that hijab is, like some of you said, a symbol of modesty, and it is worn in other forms, um, by women of different religions, like Christian women and Jewish women. And it overall represents modesty, so it's not just linked with Islam. Now, I have two verses from the Quran on the screen. Uh, the Quran is the holy book that us Muslims believe is the word of God. And often, hijab is linked to oppression or is linked to inequality. And what I want to show you guys today is why not go to the source, which is the holy book, and see what does the Quran have to say about equality and about men and women. So I have one verse on the right which says, Say to the believing woman that they should cast down their glances and guard their private parts. And then on the left, the verse right before this one in the chapter says, Say to the believing men that they should lower their gaze and guard their modesty, that will make for greater purity for them, and Allah is well acquainted with all that they do. Both of these verses are back to back in this chapter, Surah An-Nur in the Quran. And the point I'm trying to make is that God isn't just talking to women to be modest. He's talking to men as well. So why do we often see in the media or, you know, just overall, we often see that, oh, hijab is a form of oppression of women. Why do we see that? Because when you go to the source, God is telling men and women to cover. It's not like he said, oh, the woman has to cover and the men can just go around walking however. Another example is this ayah or verse I have here which says, oh men, behold, we have created you all out of a male and a female and have made you into nations and tribes so that you might come to know one another. Now, if God wanted to, he could have said, behold, we have created you out of a male. But he didn't do that. He said, we have created you out of a male and a female. Again, this emphasizes this equality. That there isn't, like, even though even in our society often we have a very male-dominated society, but if you actually look at the text, like, there is a sense of equality. Here's another example. It says, I will not allow the deeds of any one of you to be lost, whether you are male or female. Each is like the other in rewards. Again, he could have just said whether you are male, but he said whether you are male or female. The last verse I want to show you, now this is kind of long, but I just want you guys to focus on the highlighted part. I'm going to start off with the verse. It says, Indeed, the Muslim men and Muslim women, the believing men and believing women, the obedient men and obedient women. And God continues to speak this way, and then towards the end, when you look um, at the end, he says, And the men who remember Allah often and the women who do so, for them Allah has prepared forgiveness and a great reward. Now you can kind of see the pattern. 
Every time the word men is mentioned, the word woman is mentioned just as well. And men is mentioned 10 times, woman is mentioned 10 times just as well. So the point I'm trying to make, even from like, if you look at it from like a scientific perspective or a mathematical perspective, there is a sense of equality. You have a certain number of x, x variable, you have a certain number of y variable. Like just in the text, which is the main root for us, then why often do we focus on what other people are saying, how the media um, shows Islam and women, right? Because when you look back at the source, there is no sense of inequality. Rather, there's a sense of equality. So what does hijab represent? Hijab represents the love for God, like one of you mentioned. It represents faith, chastity, purity, and modesty. It mentions, it represents all of these bullets, but often these bullets are not what are shown in the media. Like it may be shown like, oh yeah, a Muslim woman is so modest, but she's also oppressed. Or she's going through inequality in her society. Why is it that way? Now, like I said, it's mentioned like, oh, Muslim women are oppressed, but then isn't it also a form of oppression to take away someone's right to cover? Do you guys know that in France, Albania, and Germany, there is some form of a hijab ban law? Isn't that a form of oppression? The point is, is that hijab is not just a fabric. It is more than that. And it includes how you interact with one another, one another, how I'm talking to you right now, when you talk to another person, how your gaze is, the words you use, how you articulate your thoughts, that's all a part of hijab. And even if I focus specifically on the word hijab, that um, isn't the reference to the cloth. The word kimar actually represents the cloth that I'm wearing on my head. Hijab is actually the overarching term for modesty. And it doesn't just pertain to women. So like I showed you the verses previously, where God is talking to men and women, men have their own form of hijab that they have to wear. Yeah, they don't wear a headscarf on their head, and that's because men and women are different, right? Biologically and physically, we are made differently, so of course they're going to have a different way that they have to cover. And for them, instead of wearing a headscarf, they have to cover between their navel and their knees. So. The point I'm trying to make is that modesty is something that is emphasized in our religion, but just because women have to cover differently than men, that doesn't make them an equal, the way the media often portrays it as. So why are we here today? Why am I here today? We are here today to educate you guys on what is hijab. We're trying to make hijab awareness, and I'm very thankful for the Siena MSA for doing this event and to give you guys the opportunity to learn and ask questions and hopefully maybe even try a hijab on. They got these awesome bright colored hijabs here. And it's very simple, easy as one, two, three. Literally, you could just put it on your head. So, do you guys have any questions for me? Don't be shy. Okay. Oh, she doesn't know. Oh, I have a question. Yes. So you're passing out, you just said you know, you're, you're making the difference between hijab and kimab. Mm -hmm. So what should be passing out kimabs or no? Should be what? You're passing out kimabs, not hijab, right? What? Does that make sense? <laughs> He's trying to be funny. Um, technically, <laughs> yeah, this is dark, you guys. Uh, I'm pretty funny. Fun of MSA. <laughs> so the common word that is used is hijab, right? Like, that's the word that we often see. But I thought I would bring up that the actual name of the cloth is Kimar, even though it isn't used as commonly as the word hijab. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Any other questions? A little bit. When did you start wearing hijab? I started wearing hijab end of third grade. Yeah. I can give a little, um, shed some light on that too, if you guys are interested in the story. Yeah. Okay, so I started um, end of third grade, which was uh, relatively um, early compared to all of my friends and everyone else around me. And like, what happened was I went to Islamic school, which is kind of like weekend school for us. And I learned about hijab through my teacher and I got very passionate. And one day I just come home and I'm like, I tell my parents, I'm like, oh my God, I want to start wearing hijab. And my parents, you know, contrary to popular belief where everyone's like, oh, did they force you? My parents were like, 
we don't know if this is a good idea right now. We don't know if you understand what hijab is. Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you know, you'll be comfortable with your friends? And I was like a crazy little child. And I'm like, you know, I really want to wear it. I, you know, I want to do this. I you know, want to be passionate about something. And so I started wearing it. And at the time, like I'm now, I have about 100 hijabs of so many shades. And there are so many random places that I don't even know. I had one hijab. And it was the one that you just slide on. It was white and it had all these pizza stains on it. It was so like, this is the one hijab I had and I'd wear it every single day. But I was very passionate. It was like my like blankie. That's like how connected I was to it. But um, I have to say definitely at that moment, I don't think I understood all those bullets I just showed you. I don't think I understood the actual meaning of hijab. For me, it was just kind of like a symbol. A symbol that my teacher wore, a symbol that my mom wore. And I just affiliated it with a lot of cultural things. I didn't actually understand, I would say, honestly, until early high school. That's when I really understood what it meant. Because I started noticing that people interacted differently with me. I mean, of course, there were some people, like when I started wearing it in elementary school, I don't blame my friends. They were very confused. They would like, ask questions like, do you wear that in the shower? Or like, do you sleep with it? And like, you know, I'm like, what do you think? Do you think I shower with it? Like, so, I mean, of course, that's because people aren't very educated on the topic. But later on, I started to really realize that it's not something that you just put on your head. It's something very empowering. It's something that you wear kind of like a shield where you're not afraid to wear it. You, you wear it not because somebody forced you. And there are some cases where parents do force their children to wear it, and that's not how it's supposed to be done. It is not a forced action. So that's my short little story. And yeah, I've been wearing it for I don't even know how many years now. But I have more than that one pizza state one, definitely. You still have the pizza state I still have that one, yes. I don't wear it anymore, but it's really small now. You know?